green. Are we up? Looks like we're okay. Good morning, good morning. Beautiful, beautiful blue sky. And last night too, for the full moon, it was a um, really, really nice, clear, clear, clear sky. Last couple of nights have been clear, perfect for walking. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's been a weekend. Boy, oh boy, it's been a weekend. <laughs> the shop was actually okay. The thing I report quite frequently, the weekend was crazy, sold more than ever before. No, no, that wasn't true. It was steady, but it wasn't one of those bizarre knock us dead weekends. We were okay. It was quiet and steady. Lots of friendly people in. Had a good time chatting with a lot of people. Some new, new, a lot of new people we've never seen before. Actually, it was easy for me the weekend because uh, maybe pretty much everybody that came in, I think, I'm sitting here, I was tracing, just tracing, tracing, tracing. And people came in and just browsed, and people came in with a big smile, and you know, you know, they, they know who we are, know what's going on. And I was lucky, pretty much every one of them was somebody who, you know, knew where they knew who we are and wanted to talk to us, but they hadn't been here before. So the, this thing of, you know, I don't recognize them, and I'm sorry, apologize, all that stuff. And there were a couple of people, a couple of guys came in. They had been here before, they did a print party, and I didn't remember them, but I hadn't been on duty that day. I hadn't been here, so we hadn't met them. So my conscience is clear. It's easy to chat with these people and there's no feeling of I've screwed up because they were here before and I don't remember them, you know. So, so it was good, good, good. Pleasant weekend. What it's going to be like today, I don't know. It's the uh, second last day of the month. They show two days in the month. The Halloween thing is in a bit of confusion here in Tokyo at the moment. There, there's no Halloween thing specifically in Asakusa. In recent years, over in Shibuya, it's really become a problem. People have been jumping on trains, making a mess, doing all kinds of stuff. And Shibuya Ward this year is trying to stop it before it starts. And this has been in the news every day for the past uh, few few weeks. The news news uh, the news outlets are helping Shibuya City, Shibuya Ward, Shibuya City with this. The mayor has said, please don't come. The police have said, please don't come. They've put barriers, physical barriers around parts of Shibuya Station. For example, Hachiko, the dog, the place where people meet. Nope, it's all barricaded off and behind walls. They're doing everything they can to stop people from coming to Shibuya Halloween night. They wanna, they wanna put a lid on this thing. Whether it's gonna succeed or not, I don't know, or whether it'll, the, the, the partying and fooling around will move to an alternate location, I don't know. And the media are helping them with this. The media are, uh, you know, making sure that the word gets out. Keep away from Shibuya. If you want to drink, if you want to party, if you want to play, fool around, break stuff, graffiti, stay away. Paper is out. Yes, so there's two packs of paper out today. Uh, Ayumi-san, she's working on, I think you asked me before, I can't remember what she's working on. She finished the Nikko printing course. She wanted something a bit more uh, that she could do in a reasonable frame of time, time frame. I don't remember what she's doing. I set it up for her, but I can't remember. And uh, Ishikawa-san, she handed in her previous job. Actually, it's right here. We'll see it in a minute. She handed in her previous job, and now she's doing, uh, oh yeah, the Drac Yokai Draco, the Castlevania print from the Ukiwa Heroes. She's doing two actually. She's got two prints. She's got two jobs going on at the same time. Uh, she's got them both in the freezer alternating. She's doing the Dracula print from Ukiyo Heroes and she's doing one of the old Doi Hanga prints, a postcard print, a Chinese scene of a little boat in the distance in a grey bamboo forest. It's a very, very nice little print. Soka, the times have changed in Europe, have they? So Europeans, it's easier for you now, is it? I still don't remember how it works. So the Europeans are here an hour earlier, are they? Americans, I don't know. It's all over the place with Americans. I don't know. Okay, it's going to be tracing today for the most part, but we've got a bunch of stuff. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things on my memo. And let's clean up the desk first. Uh, this is not what Ishikawa-san's finished. This came to us from Mita Murasan, one of the local printers. This is not new. We've had this before. This is in our portraits subscription series, and we're getting low on it, so another batch of prints. And he's done a pretty good job. This is a tough one to do a gradation. It's not because it's up from the bottom, but it's because to do a gradation with a wide solid area and then a fairly narrow gradation band. This is difficult 
To do a gradation from 100 to 0 across the brush is okay. To do it where it's 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, and then over to 0 in a small space. That's a tough call. The name of the print is, of course, Death Stare. We know where that comes from. And then Ishikawa Sound, she just turned in this one. We've had this, uh, it's been out of stock here for a while. She's turned this in. It will be trimmed. At the moment, the paper is too wide. It will be trimmed to the edges. And this is not ukiyo-e. This is more, uh, I don't know what you would call it. You know, it's not haiga, really. It's just a more of an impressionist kind of a picture. Ukiyo-e with your, with your black lines and full colors. This is much more like a painting. She's done a nice job, I think. I suspect perhaps the gradation gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the way it goes down. I don't know. No, she's okay. She's fairly consistent. This is a Zeshin design. And we've talked about this before. Probably every time that picture comes up across our desk, I say the same thing. This koi no bori thing in Japanese. Carp climbing waterfalls. I don't know. Do they really do that? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, print's out of the way. Okay, there are going to be show and tell. We've got packages for show and tell are building up like crazy. I've got one, two, three unopened ones. I was bidding on stuff last night. There will be some interesting packages arriving this week. We have more show and tell than we have time for. One quick touch up. The one we saw the other day, I learned a little bit more about it. We got a date. The show and tell item that we saw a few days ago. Very small, nothing to do with blowing your socks off. It's an announcement from a shop. We looked at it and we understood part of it. It was Mimatsu Gofuku Tem. And it's uh, Goan Nai Jo. It's an invitation card from a kimono shop called Mimatsu. They are still there and they are actually one of, it seems, going by the, the information on the web, they are a massively large kimono shop. Whether this is exactly the same business or whether it's just another business with the same name, I have no idea. Anyway, it turns out this is from 1970. This is not an ancient old thing, but here we have in 1970, long after the, the ukiyo-e printmaking thing is dead, nothing but tourist remnants left, we have a classy shop making a, an invitation card for their customers from beautifully, beautifully carved woodblock text. It's on a paper uh, treated with silver color it's got a picture. Anyway, the point being, we showed this the other day, but we now understand what it is. It's two parts. The left hand, the, the first part is a note from Azuma Sensei. He is a designer of kimono patterns, welcoming everybody to a show of his recent work, which is being held at the shop. The shop has more down and dirty details. It'll be uh, starting on the 25th of May, et cetera, et cetera. And they're going to be showing, a was it 10 or 12? I can't remember, it's in here somewhere. 10 or 12, 10. They're gonna be showing 10 of his kimono designs and these are painted kimono. A kimono design can be you hand in your design and the factory then makes it. This is different. Azuma Sensei, may have been famous or not, I don't know, has painted 10 special kimono and they will be all on display at this time. And they're marked as being not for sale here, they're just for display only. So I guess uh, no, this is not specifically a sale catalog or maybe the people come here will be uh, buying reproductions for you or something, I don't know. But the point is to meet the Ask uh, Azuma san, he will be there at that time and date and inspect his beautiful hand painted kimono. And there's a question there. I was asking some of the staff members here about this, the Japanese staff members, who know more about kimono making than I do. When you buy a kimono, you don't buy the thing like we buy, we buy a shirt, it's a shirt that's made up. We don't buy a piece of fabric and then go home and make our own shirt normally. When you buy a kimono, in the shop, you've looked at it and you buy a roll. The thing you're buying is the roll of fabric. And then they measure you and then either 
they put it together for you, cut it into strips and make the kimono up, or you take it home and your people do it, depending on your, 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 your uh, rich level. But a painted kimono, to me, as an outsider, doesn't make sense. You, you've got the roll, and if you make it up and sew it up and make a kimono-shaped object, then you could, I imagine, there you are, you grab your brush and you paint this thing. But normally, you're just getting a roll of fabric. So how do they do this? Is he painting on piece A, piece B, piece C, and he knows where they're going to line up later? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's get busy. Let's get busy. I've lost my iPad. 1970. It's later than I would have guessed. If I, I When we were chatting about that the other day, I probably said something, whatever, blah, 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 post-war. Post-war it is, but 1970 is a bit later than I would have guessed for still doing woodblock work for something like that. Someone says, any idea of the carver? I have no idea. It just went to a workshop. Bang. No idea whatsoever. And I don't think there would be any way to find that out. I don't know. So because of these packages, I don't know. Maybe we should uh, maybe have a bit longer show and tell or something. I don't really know. Let's sort that out later. Let's first, let's get some work done. 1418, that's our address. And it's also our phone number and two floors for the second floor, which we're not on. It's been, I've been coming along. Let's do this. Let's show you. I have been getting work done. Here's where we're up to. You all know the first character in the corner. He's been done for a while. I moved across. We've got the goods in the middle, the hibachi. The second character in the corner. His kimono is now ready. We followed his long neck around to his head with pipe. And now the man in the middle is now mostly done. This has been my work over the weekend. We are really getting some work done. I have to. My back is against the wall now. This is the January print, meaning it'll be posted in the first week of January. It won't go January 1st because of New Year, but it'll go in the first week of January. And today, we're going to be putting in some eyes. Let's do his face. And I was sitting here uh, over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Because it wasn't too busy, I was able to get a bunch of this done. After the face comes, there's two things left after the face. One is the calligraphy. There's a fair amount of calligraphy on this print. And the second is the kimono patterns. And we're going to try something experimental there. We'll talk about this when we do it. Okay, let's get busy. Let's get busy. This is the January print. Yes, January print. There's also two more questions come up on a part like this. You know, we've talked before about the gray. He toned in gray, and the thought was that they were intending to make it black, and the hint, gray was a hint for the carver, the carver on the outside to leave white lines. So there'd be black lines for the design, a black line for this design, and solid black inside, but with a white small line carved around that. We know why the gray is there on those kind of places. But whoever prepared this sketch, Hoxiris pupils, whatever, they also put gray wash behind the beard. And on a straight black and white print, there's no way that could be printed in black. It, there's no way the beard would have been intended to be the reverse cutout. Put the wider wash in black and slice the white lines out in white. There's no way that would have been done. So why did they put a wash behind the beard if these really had been intended to be single color prints, as every other piece of evidence points to? 
We don't know. For us, it's, uh, it doesn't matter because we decided back at the beginning here to take these prints and level up. We've taken them all and put at least two or three color blocks on each of them. Chonsan does more than I do. I've been putting three color blocks, three gray blocks on these. Chonsan, when he gets his prints, he's been putting five or six. So we'll see how it goes. For me, there will be the key block. There will be the uh, gray on the you know fabric patterns that we see here. And maybe there will be two. We've got three men here. So perhaps I'll do different grays to indicate this. And we've also got the question of background. Do I do a background tone? Because we've got things like the background and the neck and the scarf, uh, the ears. I keep thinking it's a scarf to set them aside. I'll make these decisions later, but my guess is there's going to be uh, the outline block, a light gray background tone, a fairly darker gray, something like this for these kimono touches. And maybe all the hair. Well, no, two of them. See, they've done that on two of these guys. They've put the gray hair behind A and B, but not behind C. So there will be decisions to be made. We'll see how it goes. So Koringami is saying just, you know, the gray is really to just make sure the carver knows it's hair. And there will be a lot of improvisation here too, of course, absolutely. I'm going to pretty much follow what we've got. You know, I could clean it up. Just, just take the zone and do perfectly clean hairs one by one by one by one but I don't think that's what we want here. This is not a bijinga, a beautiful woman picture where you want these hairs delicate one after the other to show her refined uh, beauty. This is a, some old dude who's a half twisted, distorted character anyway. So I'm gonna pretty much follow just what we see here. When I see a thick hair, I'm putting a thick one. And when I see a thin one, I'm gonna keep it thin. No attempt to clean this all up. And two tools, of course, the brush itself you see here, and then absolutely the eraser. It's much easier to taper them off with the eraser than it is to draw them tapered. Not sure if you noticed, but it seems to be a two kegger out there today. And I broke one of my rules. And when I'm setting up the cameras outside, there's things like there's cones out there and there's uh, garbage bags and there's uh, today we had kegs. I normally don't touch this stuff. I leave it as it is. You know, when the cones are not lined up, I don't line them up. I leave things as they are. But today outside, I did change something. And if you notice, there's not one keg there. There's two kegs there. And the two kegs were up on top of each other. So the ke <laughs> there was two kegs. Right where that lady's walking right now, we couldn't see this zone. So I did interfere a little bit with the natural world outside. I put this top keg on the side so that we'd be, able, we'd be able to get a better view down the street. So they're empty. It wasn't so heavy. Just lifted it to the side. I guess when the stream's finished, I'll put the keg back up so that we can't... Uh, not interfering with people's stuff, but uh, yeah, I did. I normally don't touch these things out there. 
we can't see the cones today anyway, but uh, having a natural cone alignment makes more sense than me trying to uh, make it happen. So. Uh, So what do we do here, Nate? Do we just make it a nice clean hair in the middle? There's a blob and a thin hair. What do we do? I really want to avoid things that look like blobs and bad carving, but we don't want to make it too neat and clean. One of the visitors yesterday, they were, there was quite a funny couple of guys came in. <laughs> this is fun. They had been here before. This is one I mentioned earlier. They had been to a print party here before, and it hadn't been me, so they knew who we were. And they were they're traveling around Japan. They got a rail pass. And they, at the moment of this trip, I think he said they were staying for three weeks, going fair amount all over the place. They were going here and there and here and there. This wasn't their first trip to Japan, so they were, they were traveling all over the place. And they had a list of things they wanted to do in Japan, and they were trying to line these things up, uh, you know, connecting with, with their travel plan. This event was happening in Osaka, so go to Osaka for that time. Next event was happening here. But they couldn't make it work. There was one event that they wanted to see in Asakusa, but it didn't, they couldn't make it line up with their travel. So they were actually in Osaka, down in the west end of the country, yesterday, but there was an event in Asakusa they wanted to see. Now, they had a train pass, so what they did was, they're in Asaka, Osaka Friday, they're in Osaka Saturday. Sunday morning, they jumped on the train, came all the way to Tokyo just to do this event in Asakusa, drop by here and say hi, then jump back on the train, go back to Osaka, stay there. Then they're coming back to Tokyo next week for something else. I'm like, this is no way to run your holiday. You spend half the time with your bum on a train seat. And they're like, no, we really, really, really wanted to see this event. And the event they wanted to see yesterday was, uh, how do we describe it? It was a cat festival. And I'd never heard of it. And there's these two guys standing in our shop saying, we came to Asakusa today for the festival of cats. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And our staff said, like, what are you talking about? And they said, like, don't you know about this? It's a big deal. It's been going on for many years. This is the 18th year in a row this thing has happened. And I stood there just flabbergasted. I had never heard of this. It's a cat festival. I got a link. It's all done now. It's all finished on Sunday. Here's a link to a here's a link to a link about it. And, <laughs> and honestly, I had never ever heard about this. And there's these two dudes, these two friends, uh, you know, acquaintances, fans of ours, who you know knew what was going on. And of course, they're like, "Why weren't you there? Because we have we have cat prints galore. We should maybe have uh, have been ex exhibiting down there, you know." It was just around, just around the corner, the three, four minutes walk from here. Cats.
<laughs> People say they missed it. I mean, I didn't know anything about this. It's not a festival in the sense of a shrine festival or something like this, you know, going back hundreds of years, these people of Japan worship these felines. It's nothing like that. It's a commercial event that brings together various people making stuff that have a relation to cats. So cat nerds come and nerd out and they buy the, they buy the products or whatever. It's, there's cat cookies. So this is not something, you know, an old traditional festival here in Japan. There, there may be such things, but this is not what that was. So. But Honjiti, I hadn't known about it. It's this kind of country. You've been here 40 years nearly. Stuff like this is there, and right in my neighborhood. And a couple of guys from, from Canada uh, show me about it. So. What I do here, of course, is going to affect my work next week. We've got the main lines of the hat here, and now we've got this hair, and it sticks out from underneath the hat. If I put the white panel in, you can see it more easily. And if I do too much of this, where one line crosses another, this is going to make my, my work next week more difficult. And I could cheat here and just take all these hairs and, and don't make them come past the hat, but oops, but that's not that's not the name of the game, you know. We've got to remember the scale here, you know. At what we're doing here, I've got to cut out that little triangle. I've got to cut out that little square, cut out these pieces. But the scale, this thing is going to be, where are we going? We're going down here. So all that is happening within, you know, like one fraction of my fingernail here. So it's not just what's possible for me to carve. It's what's possible for this wood to, to handle. And then what's possible for the printers to make without pigment jamming up in there? This whole project, we're at the very, very, very edge of what is possible here, you know. This, I think, is nothing. I don't know. What have we got here? It's, what is it? Let's just put some in here. Do people cosplay as cats there? I don't think it was that kind of a festival. I think, as I said, it was just a commercial event, a hundred, couple hundred booths of people selling stuff related to cats. I don't really know. Maybe there were people as cats prancing around. I don't know. There must be people who put it up on Instagram or TikTok or something by now. The two guys that came in here, they had, they had swag bags. They must have, you know, they've gone to all 200 booths and bought stuff. I have no idea. They, they had tons of stuff. Jump on the train and go back to Osaka. <laughs> I guess maybe in the old days I would have done something like that as well. You know, here I am in Japan. I got a train pass. Let's just jump on the train and go, go 800 kilometers or 500 kilometers both way, each way. Be back for dinner. I guess this is maybe one of the only rare country where you can actually do that. Wake up in Osaka, have breakfast, have lunch in Osaka, go to Tokyo for the afternoon for an event, and go back to Osaka for your hotel, you know. Nanda.
So I'm saying, are the lines ever so thin we get scared the wood might break off? And we're going to be using box, I'm going to be using box wood for this. Oops, undo paint wrong, whatever. And breaking off isn't going to be uh, a fear. When we carve these lines, they're, they're thin at the top, but they really widen out to a base. And breaking off isn't particularly a, a concern. When I'm carving them, the concern would be a couple of things. And uh, the lines themselves actually are not as important as the spaces between. When I carve the spaces between, it's a bit of a paradox. We want to get a good deep slot there so that paste and water doesn't fill in the slots between the lines because that will cause a lot of uh, blotchiness. If we get black blobs between these hairs, that will be very visible. And then the other thing is, if I try and carve too thin, we, you know, we imagine this, we're, we're carving this, a mountain shape with a little flat ridge. There's got to be some flat ridge on top to print the line. Now, ideally, we would get on the thinnest line, we would get the ridge so it came to a point. And that would be the thinnest line possible, you know, infinitely thin if we got it exactly at a point. I can't do that. And if I go a bit too far with one of these, the lines cross and the ridge is lower than it should be and that won't print. So carving them too thin at the point when my knife is moving, carving them too thin makes the actual line, of course it disappears, it's invisible. So getting, getting this just right, and what I'm drawing here are just guides, and the real work will be done with a knife. This is just simply to show the guy with the knife, me, next week, where we want to try carving hairs. And if we looked at this picture now and come back a few weeks from now, a couple of months from now, after the carving and printing are done, it would be an interesting you know, experiment, an interesting thing to see what I actually carved for this. What actually happened when knife hit wood. Because this is just a guide that says, get down there, cut some stuff that looks sort of like these hairs. And we read about the Egawa Tomikichi, and this would be uh, what era? I don't know the years, I'm sorry, I'm not good at remembering the years these things happened. He was the guy who carved the first couple of volumes of the Hokusai book, Fugaku Hyakke. His name is in the back on the colophon page, and when we say his name, we really mean his team rather than uh, one man himself. He would have done, you know, made the faces and the important stuff. And his team would have uh, filled in a lot of the rest. And he is, he, what well, was in those days, he was renowned. He was the top gun, absolutely the top gun. And there are things like uh, letters and research materials that are left over from those days. Uh, letters from Hokusai to his publisher and stuff like this, you know where Hokusai specifically says, for my next project, I want Tomikichi. None but him, nobody else can carve the way I want these things to be drawn, you know, etc., etc., etc. There is such reference material left. And that book is astonishing. The quality of the carving is just astonishing. So the, the point being that what we have is a situation where people like that, like that Top Gun, it wasn't even necessary to do what I'm doing here. When you knew your job was going to that guy, maybe it was a page of the Hokusai manga, there's 10 little men in a row, all there, whatever. You don't need to draw the hairs. You just put the gray, put the gray blur in the back and the carver knows what to do. I'll carve some hair that looks like Hokusai would have drawn it. So they say, so they tell me, but uh, have I tried that? Take a blur on the block, take my knife. I've carved enough Hoksai heads, I should know what they look like. Go for it, carve a Hoksai face. Am I man enough for that? That should be, be a, it's a skill test for Taransan, someday. <laughs>
You just put an oval, just just something, just something like this. You, uh, you just put an oval. Okay, here you are. Carve a hoax eye face. You know, there's going to be eyes and a nose and, and hair at the side like this. Just go ahead. If you're a really good carver, that's all you need. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's one of the uh, events I proposed years and years and years ago. I was talking to some of the guys in the Kumeyaay, the Crafts Guild. I was getting good publicity in those days. I was making the Poet series. Some of those guys were struggling. The Guild itself wasn't getting good publicity. And at one of the dinners, one of the guys really hit me. You know, you're so lucky you get all this media, blah, blah, blah. We're not, you know, getting any coverage at all. And I came back to him, you know, I'm getting media because I'm doing something interesting. I work on the media, I, you know, blah, 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 blah. So he said, well, okay, okay well, what, what would you do then? What do you think we should do? And I sat there at the meeting and I put a bunch of ideas on the table. And none of it ever, ever, ever came to anything and it never could have come to anything. But I put a bunch of ideas on the table. And one idea was, you've got these different workshops here, do an Olympics. Do a traditional Japanese printmaking Olympics. Each of the workshops can send a team, the guy and maybe some of their apprentices or whatever, and you can do uh, your own individual events. You know, how long it takes. You've got a stack of paper there. Send two printers each running to their stack of paper. How can they count? Are there 43 sheets there? You know, we have to count paper all the time. There's any number of events that could have been done. Simple stuff like that. Who can count the paper the most accurately and fastest? Who can slice the paper to the right size? Who can tie their barren more quickly? You know, there's any number of events that could have been built up. The media would have lapped it up. It could have been a really cool thing to raise the profile of these craftsmen. And of course the idea totally, 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 totally died on the vine because none of them wanted to participate in case they lost. I don't care. I would have been happily last place in all of these things because I had nothing to lose. But a workshop that's been here a hundred years, Adachi sends a team, somebody from the Watanabe workshop sends a team, somebody loses. Can't, can't ever let that happen. So the, the idea just died on the vine. Of course it died on the vine. But that would have been one for the carvers. There you go, for your top carvers. You've got 15 minutes. You've got this block. Some of the judges have prepared this small circle. Carve Hoxai face. Then it'll send over to the printers. We'll have a look and which one looks most like Hoxai. <laughs> I'm not so sure if I would want to take part in such an event right now. You know, you know, 20 years ago I had nothing to lose because I was the lowest kid on the totem pole. <laughs> but now I don't know. So if this idea comes to me, I might say, hmm. No, yeah, good idea. Let's, uh, let me think about that for a while. Don't call me, I'll call you. <laughs> so. <laughs> so here we are. And the losing team for seven years in a row. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Whatever, it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> I think, I don't know. <laughs> I have no contact with those guys these days at all. Almost no contact. I went to a meeting, when was it? Asuka Sensei asked me to go to a meeting. Last spring it must have been. It was the meeting where Taran-san was being, uh, was being uh, approved for entry. Taran-san joined the group. So I went to, to make, you know, just as a little bit of uh, whatever, you know, uh, support and backup, you know. It's pretty much more abundant now anyway. You know. And they still, they have no idea about publicity, about how to make their work stand out, about how to get media attention. They just don't have a freaking clue. Okay, I think we're good on this area here right now. Where's next? Okay, well, the other side, I guess. We've done his face on the left-hand side. Let's move over. Oh, speaking about Hiroshige, that reminds me. I don't know why it would remind me. 
somebody the other day, did we talk about this? The print party experience at the National Museum. Did I put the link into the, blo into the, into the uh, chat here? This may be a repeat. I may have done this the other day. It's on my little list of things to talk about. Mention to the chat the print party. It's not a print party. The make your own print experience at the National Museum. It's not a print party. When I say print party, I mean make your own woodblock print here in Japan. And the National Museum here in Tokyo, two subway stations down the street, has got a little make your own print event happening. Koringami says, wait, I go fetch it. He's got the link then. I must have talked about it. Yeah, Jed shared it on his Instagram. And we've had a couple of people now come in the shop and show us. Don't get excited. I mean, they're calling it make your own ukiyo-e print. But it's not washi. It's not printmaking as we know it. <laughs> what's, what's the word? It's not printmaking as we know it, Jim. Whatever. The link is coming. Here, somebody's got the link. So, 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 so. No, no, I'm not baiting and switching. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It's just I'm mentioning this because it's a thing. If you're in the museum, it would be cool to go and do this. It's not, it shows simply that woodblock prints were made of different blocks. Here's the blue, here's the red, here's the green, here's the black. That, that's the only experience you're going to get. It's not linoleum at all. It's, it's rubber stamps. There's a kind of stamp here. When we were kids, there were, you know, you had your name and address. It was, a, we called it a rubber stamp. There's a stamp pad. And the stamp and you dip your you you stamp your rubber thing into the stamp pad you put it in the envelope and bingo you've printed your name and address a stamp pad right that's what they're called here in japan there's self-inking stamp pads we've got them here at mokohangam when we send a letter my god do we ever do that whatever same thing it's got its own ink thing mixed in so all you do is you put it on the paper you go ka-chunk ka-chunk and it comes up with the thing that you have designed so they've prepared one of these for a Sharak design. It's, it's like almost postcard size. And they've got guides on the table. There's a slot. You pick up stamp number one, match the arrows, put it in, put it in and go ka-chunk, and a blob of red comes out. You move to the next station, take the next one, fit the arrows, ka-chunk, and a blob of green. And you do this one, two, three, four times, and at the end of it, you have a Sharak woodblock print. Not really. But anyway, it's... It's what it is. I mean, honestly, it's all they can do. They can't really replicate the experience that we had of a print party here. To do that in a museum on the floor, you need staff all the time. You need the paper. I mean, it's a... It's a You'd have to really make a big investment in getting that sorted out. And then keeping your staff, you know. It's a big, big deal. To replicate the print party experience itself is absolutely not easy. So. But when somebody came in a couple of weeks ago and said, Hey, I made my print at the museum. My jaw, my jaw dropped first. What? You made a print up there? They've got a print party going on? Show me, show me, show me. And the guy pulls out this card, this little Sharak print, and, uh, and shows it. You know. And I'm like, ah, so God. But anything's better than nothing. It's fun. I would happily do it if I was in the museum. I would sit there stamping, stamping, stamping. We still get asked every day of the week, every hour of every day of the week. People are here, males are coming in. What time can I book my party for? for can I book one for next Thursday, two o'clock, please? Six people, eight people. Can we have a special private print party, please? Three people will be willing to pay more to have it private. We get this, these inquiries come in still day after day after day. We built ourselves a wonderful thing and unfortunately had to, uh, had to put it down. And people still, there's huge demand for that thing. We just can't do it.
Would woodblock carvers have made seals? No, seals, the hunko, they weren't made from wood. They were made from either ivory or boxwood or bone or things like this. The, the normal seals you would put your name on. It's not the same carving, not the same tools, not the same materials, not the same skill set. There's no, <coughs> an old guy just around the corner here, about two blocks around the corner. He's a, a hunko carver. He'll make the hunko with your name to order. When you see the red seal on a woodblock print, that's different. That was carved into the wood blocks in the normal fashion. But no, seal carving, hanko carving. I don't know what they call the guy. Do they call him Horishi? I don't know. What's the name of the man who carves seals? I don't know the name. Any pool news? Things are what they are, and they've settled down a little bit. <coughs> I, I didn't, my, my pace lady wasn't there today because it's Monday. She's not there on Monday, so for me, Monday is a kind of a little bit of a, it's relaxed for me because I'm by myself in the lane, but it's a tiny bit frustrating for me because I can't find the right pace when I swim by myself without that lady always there with her tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. I struggle a bit to find the pace. I swim a bit too fast when I first get in the water, and I end up getting tired a bit earlier than I should have done. So I'm much happier on the other days of the week when my, my pace car is in the lane. The lady who has been causing trouble wasn't there today. So today was a very quiet, typical day at the pool. And this week I'm going to miss it twice. I'll be going only three times instead of five times this week. I went today. I'll, I won't be going tomorrow because tomorrow is the last day of the month. And still, even in this post-pandemic era, they are still following one of the rules that was established during the pandemic. The entire building, the entire fitness center is closed twice a month, the last day of the month and on the 15th for deep cleaning. So I have no, no pool on the, last, on the last day of the month. And then Friday this week is another damned national holiday. And none of my staff will be here to work, and nor can I swim. I don't like holidays. <laughs> but me, I'm doing fine, just back and forth, back and forth. I do my 40 laps, takes about 25 minutes. On a fast day, it'll be 24 and a half minutes. On a slow day, it's 25 minutes. Not exactly Olympic time, but that's not the idea. Oh, Terry McKenna has a web page set up for his print experience. He hasn't told me. I told him, let me know. Let me know. Okay, you know more than I do. I will look for this later on. He's doing it, I heard that he was doing it twice a week. Is I don't know what matches here, so don't quote me here. Go to the page. It was going to be Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, and once Thursday morning, once Thursday afternoon. He was going to do it four times a week. If that's what's actually happened, I don't know. Someone says, aren't holidays a great opportunity for you to catch up with the things I have to do? <clears throat> holidays are the days when the staff aren't here and I'm extra inundated with work. Nanda. Nanda, there's no holidays for me. We have a shop. The shop is open. Shop staff is here. It's the regular employees. People like Ayano-san, Aya-san, Watanabe-san, Yamada-kun, Teiko-san, shop manager. They're not here. The, the full-time employees are not here on holidays. All the, uh, what do you call it, hourly employees, of course. They, it doesn't matter to them. But they get a different rate. They get paid more. But... Uh, no, for me, holidays are extra work, not holidays. I'm an executive. Executives don't get holidays, actually, legally. That's not just Dave playing. My position as a company executive means I am immune from all the rules 
that forced the company to give people holidays. As an executive, those rules and laws do not apply to you. Legally, literally. I mean, of course, because I'm an executive, I can take a day or something, I can do that. But the point being, the laws that regulate what holidays you should take or what legal holiday allowances you have do not apply to me. Somebody going upstairs. Who would that be? That could be Yamada Sankara, our young accounting boy. Or is it one of the printers coming in? It won't be Ayana san, she'll be coming here. <laughs> Dave, my workaholic. I don't know. I don't know what that word means. I am enjoying life. I get up in the morning and I do my stuff. I don't really know what the word workaholic, you know, I get what you're getting at. And do I have a good work-life balance? By the way, most Westerners would measure it. I guess I don't because, I, you know, I don't take very many days off. I sit here doing my stuff. At the moment, I have a very, very heavy deadline in front of me. This print has to go January 1st. When you're the owner and manager of a 30-person business like this, it's not big enough to have a full-time general manager. So I have to be not just the owner, I have to be the manager of everything. And that has to get done. Now, is that my excuse, it has to get done? Or am I, is this a disease, like an alcoholic disease? I'm a workaholic. I don't know how to answer. I really don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a legit question. I don't know. Who's on second? <laughs> Who's on first? Who's on third? Okay, let's play the game. Who's on third? Right now, I don't know. <laughs> it's Ishikawa-san and, and, and Ayumi-san are coming today on third. They will be who's on third. Who's on second? Later, who's on second will be the accounting boy, Yamada-san. Uh, Aoyama-san, I think, is coming today. Not quite sure. Ayano-san who is the lady who answers all your emails, and Watanabe-san, who is the lady who runs our flea market. These are the people who's on second today. And who's on first today, it will be Teiko-san, the, the lady working in the shop and a nominal shop manager. It'll be Marcella-san, the lady from Mexico City. She will be in the shop today. And I believe uh, Udegawa-san, one of the local a lady living nearby, I say a housewife lady, whatever, a Japanese lady who works for us, she will be in the shop. So there'll be three people downstairs, there'll be four people upstairs on the second floor, there will be two people up on the third floor. And I think Yuki-san, our, our trainee girl from China, will also be here, upstairs on the third floor. And then there will be me. Then over in our Ome workshop, there will be one, perhaps two people working today at shipping. They will be shipping all the orders that came in over the weekend. And then working in their own homes are a bunch of printers and carvers. Three carvers working in their own home. I don't know their schedule, working today or not. It's up to them. Three carvers. And printers, outside printers, one, two, three three, four. There's four outside printers that uh, will be presumably working on my projects in their own home today, along with three carvers. A whole bunch of people doing Mokohan kind of work. How's your time? I understand we'll be here any minute. I said 30 people, but it's not 30 full-time employees. We don't have 30 people punching in and punching out, you know, 9 o'clock to 5. There's, what is the count then in the building, you know? Second floor there is. It's those four people, full-time workers on the second floor. They're, you know, the daily routine for them. Up on the third floor, the printers, there's four. Well, Sugisan is gone now, so there's three regular printers upstairs on the fourth floor, plus the young girl from China. 
Then outside printers, there are one, two, three now working full time for us, doing nothing else but our work, and one other one who occasionally does some work for us. Then carvers, there's me, if you're counting me in the carving team, there are three now full time carvers, Kawasaki san, Taran san, and Chon san. They work most, for the most part at home, they occasionally come here. Then shop staff, this is a rotation. These are hourly paid staff who come usually two days, sometimes three days a week. None of them are full time. None of them are contracted employers, employees. And how many of them are there? It's a rotation of people. There's nine of them now, eight, nine or 10 of them. In, in the shop rotation, people coming usually two days a week, sometimes three, sometimes one, depending on their own preference. So that's the staff. I said 30. I think it's about 30 people. Who have I forgotten? Oh, well, Ome, of course, Ome staff. There's, uh, there's two ladies who come there. Uh, they're not contracted employees. They're hourly employees, but they come there three days a week each. They usually overlap and take their own time. And then this new lady has been hired. She starts this week in Ome. She's going to do two days a week. She's a new hire. She's in a, in a test uh, situation at the moment. She's come in to help the Ome staff. And one more printer. There's one more printer who works out of the Ome workshop and her own home. My God, I forgot Susan Masao. So I guess, is that 30? I didn't, I didn't count as, the, as we went along, so. Oh, it must be Ayano. Me and Ayano. Hi, hi, come on in. I think it's okay. Good morning, yeah. good morning. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Oh, we got the dark again. Look at that. I, I forgot to put the lights on. Oh my, god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Put the lights on the lady. Oh, yeah, How are you doing, ma'am? A bit tired. A bit tired. <laughs> Moving preparation. We have the same, we're going to have the same conversation as last week, exactly. <laughs> focusing on the moving preparation on Saturday like whole, all day from like 7 to mm. I don't know mm. 8 p.m. Mm. Mm. Um, yesterday was fun we went to Taryn's friend's wedding and that was like our whole afternoon so, so it was so, fun so, so, but so. also so they were tired. Taran's friend's wedding? So a foreigner? Well, his former co-worker. Oh, I see. I see yeah, I see, I see. but slash friend. But it's like a Japanese, when you say go to a wedding now in Japan, we really don't know what you mean because there's so many different styles and ways to do this. So right. do you mean like the church ceremony or the party or uh, what? This time was a restaurant wedding. Restaurant wedding. Restaurant wedding. So they uh, went to restaurant and then normally it's just a restaurant, but this time like it, it was just, you know, them and, you know, the guests. So no other customers uh, entering the restaurant and then they... Yeah, they did the ceremony and they did turnover, the cocktail party. Tur tur turnover, turnover, turnover. Turnover is like, uh, so churches in Japan, like churches, not real ones, but different churches for wedding. They do have a wedding venue for ceremony and they do have a room for reception party. party. Yeah. So they don't need to do turnover. As soon as the ceremony finishes, they go to this reception room. Uh, oh, oh okay, but you're using the word turnover. Oh. I don't understand what you mean. I'm sorry. Uh, turnover. You mean turnover is like... Uh, if they are using the same venue, the yeah. venue room for the ceremony and the reception party, okay. they have to do a turnover. They have to move the guests out of the room and they change the ceremony room to. Okay, uh, okay. A Instead party of seats room. in a row, move the table. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. used to work in a wedding company, so she's using this language. We got to do the turnover. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, I okay. Think it's more common in Western uh, you know, countries, like do use this room for ceremony, then turnover, then reception party in the same room. But the uh, Japanese weddings, normally they have this wedding ceremony in this room, then guests move to another room. They have like a three, four different... Uh, okay, if you've gone to a wedding rooms. venue, I mean, here in yeah. Japan, there are buildings. This is a wedding place where you go to the building mm. and there will be a chapel room in there. And like she says, they will be down the hall on the right. That's your room number seven. That's where your yeah. party is. So okay, okay, okay. It's more efficient. Okay, but, okay, yeah. okay. okay, yeah. okay, so, okay. But this time, because they used a restaurant, you know, we had a ceremony, then cocktail party, okay. then reception. You said a ceremony. Is this like white dress and here comes the bride or what? What's yeah, the... something like that. Yeah, it's just ceremony is ceremony, but they, I think they imp not improvise, but like they made their own like ceremony schedule instead of like doing like a, this typical Japanese wedding. So they didn't. We, we didn't sing. Uh, we didn't 
pray mm. or we mm. didn't mm. swear anything. Mm. Just mm. you know. So is there anything religious about this, or is it a? No, nothing religious involved. Okay, but also been, then this couple they've already like been to city hall. Yep. And they've done the paper at city hall, so yeah. they're legally married already at mm -hmm. city hall. This is a ceremony to. Just uh, to. To make them emotionally feel married yeah, 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 and yeah. their friends feel married, but legally it's already happened at yeah, city it's hall. Okay, okay, okay. It's interesting, like always, like if you go to someone's wedding, you can see what the couple values most. Some couples do value like how they look, like wedding dresses and tuxedo. But this couple, like yesterday, um, they value the food most. The what? Food. <laughs> I guess. That's why they chose a restaurant, not a wedding venue, because restaurants, if you choose a good place, then they do you know, the best okay. food. So it's not rubber chicken, whatever. The, the food really was nicely prepared mm -hmm. food. Interesting. Because the idea we would think of with a wedding, it's the, the idea and the wedding and the ceremony. <clears throat> oh, by the way, we have to have food. So it's sort of catered something. And the, the classic example in the West would be it was a rubber chicken dinner, so which was what they that. say, you know. Mm. Okay, so this was actually, the, the, the place you went to was a professional food preparing place, yeah, I mean, yeah, a restaurant. Yeah, and really. the chef came out and the chef was explaining, like, you know, he made this uh, with this sauce and you know, this is like you know, the special secret involved in this. It sauce. sounds like you're describing Western food, though. So this was like a French French food menu? Well, or? It was a, I don't know, Italian, French? Okay, but we're not we're not talking the sushi dinners. This no, is no, no, Western no, no. Western food. Western, Western food, yeah. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, interesting. so the food was delicious. It was a, I don't know, way too much. I, I just needed to leave some because you know I can't eat that much. <laughs> <laughs> but the food was delicious. I think that's somebody the... said, no, we don't need a pasta because you've got pasta. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So, okay, what about the moment then? To, to, there's, there's too many stories that are all wrapped up here, impossible. We need hours to talk to you and listen about this. But the moment then, you said there was a ceremony first, mm -hmm. and then let's have fun, let's have a party, and have some good food and wine. But the ceremony, the moment of, like in the West, we have this preparation, preparation, then I now pronounce you man and wife, blah, blah. And like yeah. he gives her a kiss and there's a ring and all that stuff. What's, what happened here? Uh, so, because there are some native teachers, you know, walking at the, you know, the school, uh, this groom, Taran's friend, he asked like a bunch of his like co-workers to do this job and that job. And uh, okay, these are foreigners you're talking about? Yeah, foreigners, okay, okay. yeah, native dishes, yeah. Um, he asked one of his co-workers to do, what's the, what's the guy called to do, to hold the wedding ceremony and they like, give us, not speech, but Aniska. Best man? No, priest? No, not Oh, okay, priest. yeah, well. Well, oh, the officiator. The officiator. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. in a Christian era, it's the, it's the the priest, or bokshi, you mean? So this, so this. Yeah, the priest or the minister. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because it's a religious one. environment, okay. <laughs> so yeah, he asked one of his co-workers to do that job, but he's not a priest. Like, it's no, just, yeah, like, yeah. But it's, it's okay. But he's, he's got a Bible there and all this kind of no, stuff? No, he just, uh, I don't know, made just something took up. some scripts from like movies that he's seen. <laughs> but it was funny because... Oh. Like, <laughs> So it's like a Canadian guy and a Japanese girl's wedding. Uh -huh, so like, uh -huh. this, no, no, there's no religion involved yeah, yeah, in this okay, wedding okay, okay, ceremony. Okay, so okay but, but her parents, who are probably presumably traditional Japanese people, her parents are sitting there. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what are these guys doing? You know, yeah, is it... I don't think that her parents understood the English. Like most parts were done in English. Uh, in oh, English. God, but uh, oh, this God, guy oh, who was uh, kind of organizing a reception party, he's also Canadian. Um, he was really good at speaking Japanese, so he did both English and Japanese translation. Mm -hmm. was he was really good, one of the mm -hmm. few people I've ever seen yeah. speak such good There's Japanese. There's a bit of background here. If this had been happening in a Japanese framework, a Japanese couple getting married and hiring a Japanese company to do this in a Japanese wedding hall, this thing would be scripted to within an inch of its life. This is what Anasan used to do. And there are very formal things. You must have this, you must have this, you must have this. You must have the speech from the best man. You must have the speech from the bride's father. There's a whole list of things that are absolutely mandatory. Clearly mandatory. She's sitting here nodding at me, whatever. I mean, I've been to weddings like this. So when I hear this story, this sounds cool, sounds like fun. The young couple has made it up. You know, this sounds like it was really nice, good food, whatever. But I can't help but think of the parents of the bride you know, the Japanese parents who themselves went through a real normal Japanese wedding and they're sitting listening to all this going on and thinking, is this okay or whatever? You know, I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, I don't know. That something was strange. Like normally, like at the Japanese, like traditional Japanese wedding, 
parents go around each table mm. and like say mm. thank you yep. for coming yep. like absolutely. please the absolutely. Couple, blah 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 for beer in their yep. glass yep. they didn't do that and then they didn't even give a speech so mm. i'm like oh maybe like they felt just the, yeah out of it yeah, like yeah. so so, so 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 yeah. so when i hear the so story it's all cool <laughs> but i can't help but think about that couple the par yeah. parents of the bride you know thinking mm. Jesus, this is a party, but this isn't a wedding, you know, I mean, like, yeah. when it, you know, really. really but yeah, so. what, this is what the yeah. couple wanted, so. so but mean, the other side of it, they didn't also have to pay $20,000 for yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> so. so that's all I must. I guess, like, this flexibility and freedom uh, should be available to mm. any Japanese mm. people. No, of course. They just so. don't know, like, what to do, so mm. they just go through this, like, um, yep. Th that's so a, that's the thing. So because there's a Canadian guy involved here, all these ideas are mixed, and there's freedom to do this. Yeah. But well, a normal Japanese couple, they may have seen things like this, but they would be so afraid of not knowing what to do and not yeah. knowing how to organize it mm -hmm. that they just fall back in the classical situation. Call up the wedding company, just pay the money, and let's just do this in the normal way. Everybody will be happy. Nothing will go wrong, and we'll be okay. So that's yeah. the default situation. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to hear this story. Fun to so hear this. Story. Yeah, the other thing about a Japanese wedding is the people who are invited, it's okay, they're happy to be invited, but there's an obligation when you're invited to a wedding. You've got to go down to the stationery store, you've got to get this fancy little envelope with all the red lettering and the, mm -hmm. the little fancy stuff is, and you have to take money with you. And there's real kind of strict rules about how much is expected to take. And it's a it's one of these things that goes around. When you get married, you will receive these envelopes, and when you're going to a wedding, you do that. And it covers a very large percentage of the costs of this wedding. In the case of the one you're talking about here, it could be that pretty much the restaurant cost and most of the stuff that was there was covered by the amount that the guests would bring, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much they were getting that like, because like half of the guests... Uh, more than half, kind of half, more than half of the guests were Japanese, so I, I assume they brought money. They would know what to do. Yeah, yeah but there, there are some, you know, <laughs> yeah, foreign guests who wouldn't know what, yeah, what to do. So I maybe they show up empty-handed or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like, well, yeah. we also went to uh, another co-worker's, like a wedding, parents' co-worker's wedding, like a we a year ago, and then most of the, the native teachers didn't know like if they needed mm. to bring money, mm. like mm. money. Mm. Yeah. What. Yeah, kind of like yeah, reaction. Yeah. So, so I have no idea in the West, you know, gifts for people getting married, there's like you have your gift page at Amazon and stuff. So I don't know anything about the culture over there. Here it's money. You don't bring flowers, you don't bring food, you don't bring a, a casserole, whatever. No, you bring cash in an envelope, and of, of an envelope of a specific type. But it doesn't end there because the people who have received this money, there's a little lady at, at the table there who is writing it all down and says, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the young couple then, somewhere a week or two weeks or three weeks later has to reciprocate by sending a gift to each of the people who have brought money. And this has changed a lot. It used to be you, you had to send like a, a saucepan or a set of dishes or something. And everybody in town has got these wedding blowback presents. They've got the dishes in the cupboard up at the top of the kitchen. Uh, but the culture now has changed. changed are they going to yeah. use the catalog? What are they going to do? Uh, this couple, they didn't do that. So I guess like it was more like a budget friendly wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but yeah, normally if I go to someone's wedding, I get a catalog, like a thick book and I can yes. choose like whatever. So you've given your money, you've given your, your $100 or $200 or $50 or $500, whatever it is as, as a gift, depending on your status level. And, and when you come home for the wedding, you get a little shopping bag and in there will be a little a snack thing, a little bit of cookies or something or whatever, and a thank you letter. And there will be a catalog. And your catalog will be marked with the level that you're eligible to buy. And inside the catalog, there's level X, level Y, level Z, level A, level B, whatever. And you will have a slip of paper saying, David, thank you for the wedding. Level A is your level in the catalog. <laughs> and it's based on exactly how much you gave. I mean, it has to work this way. So you take the catalog home. And, you, and in fact, the wallet, the wallet I'm using right now comes from one such gift catalog. I went to this wedding of a son of a guy who used to be a collector of my poet series. My God, this is like 15 years ago. And out of the catalog, there was nothing I wanted, but my old wallet was getting ratty. So here's my chance to get so, so there's nothing that a you wallet. Actually you know. Yeah, that's what I, what I struggle so, most. Yeah, so. But the it, there's something in there. And in the catalog too, there's also going to be the food gifts. You can buy, a, yeah. you, can, you can choose le level C, page 75, and it's 10 cans of juice or something, or you know, beer mm -hmm. tickets or whatever. So there's something in there that everybody can find so something easy. usable. So you know, so. <laughs> and maybe the couple, the downside for this is they're going to use up about half of the money that came in in 
putting back these gifts. Yeah. So yeah. that's part of the budget. <laughs> It's I don't know, like, if we're happy, if everyone is happy, yeah. or like if everyone thinks that well, actually, this doesn't make much it's sense. It's okay. <laughs> what goes around comes around. So you, you take the money to the wedding when you go, and when it's your turn, it comes in your pocket yeah. too. You know, except that in this case, these guys, Ayano San and Taran San, hi, hi. they've done the city hall part. They've been living together for ages. They are now married. They're husband and wife. They've changed all their names and stuff. They haven't had a ceremony party yet and those of us around them are sitting here waiting to figure out what is going on like I still as her boss I have a moral and not legal but a moral and a social duty to help this young couple by taking one of these envelopes but the format for those is the party and they haven't done this yet oh, I'm the one who is not really into uh organizing a wedding ceremony. It's just, uh, I don't know, I don't like getting attention in that way. <laughs> like I Keep just, talking, keep them. I, this I is a really know. interesting point. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. The wedding is not just getting attention from guests, of course. It's just, you know... It's a marker of a major change in your life. And the yeah. idea about having your friends there is that together we will mark this major, one of the biggest things you're ever going to do in your life. And the yeah. idea is your friends are around there to say, hey, Go for it, lady. Have a good time and make, you know, make this happen. And you haven't done this. We haven't had a chance to do this with you. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Okay, what's the consensus? The wedding party and ceremony, is it about those guys or is it about the friends? About Imagine, the okay, yes. okay, to take this in a different situation, a different mood, let's switch completely around funerals and stuff. Somebody's died. The person is gone. They're not even there. So the funeral is not for the person who's died. The funeral is for the other people to, to you know, to say goodbye and see the family and whatever. So there is this aspect to Aino san by saying no party. What about me? I know, I know. It's for it's for um, guests. You know, the ceremony is for guests, and also I want to thank my my parents too. Mm. But yeah, okay. Eesh. My, yeah. not, this is none of my business. Um, she knows how we feel about this. And those of us and the rest of the, her friends, so we're just waiting. It could be that they're not going to do this. And it's a little bit of relief. Well, I'm going to have to make my donation to these guys anyway. If they don't decide what to do on this soon, morally and, and, and hopefully social rules and personal feeling, I need to make my donation to their life anyway even if they're not going to do this. Yeah. Their other friends won't. Their other friends will, no party, no, no, no envelope. But I'm their employer, so I'm in a bit of a, diff a, you know, a more special situation. I'll happily do this. I'm not complaining. Oh my God, I've got to dig into my pocket and pay, pay, pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. She <laughs> says so, but we both know what has to be done here. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, I know. I like to attend the wedding. I don't mind giving speech. It's just that, like mm. I don't want to be the main person. Or, like, she you know. used to work at a wedding company, so she knows the background of what, what kind of a crazy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something that you probably don't want to see. So, so I'm sure it's just chaos in the background, yeah. chaos. Last time I was on an airplane flight going to Canada, the person in the seat front left of me was playing a Japanese movie about something, uh, chaos that went in at a wedding company behind the scenes. And I couldn't see it or hear it, but it was subtitled. So I, I saw this movie off and on about it, and it seemed like just, it was a slapstick comedy in one of these places where the, 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 the venue, the, the, the room for jokes and slapstick was just inevitable. So. So, so. But the wedding, I know, overall it's a happy job this year, wedding company. You get to see like those happy couples, happy people, not like miserable, groomy, sad people. You normally get to see happy couple, and okay, that I gives you so. like a good, like, good vibe. But if it energy. all goes, if it all goes well, you know, mm. so, so. Well, and of course, like, I don't know, some arguments happen during meeting because they are talking about like this massive amount of money. Mm. So, mm. yeah, just thought. So, I mean, she, she knows some horror stories. I know, couples burdened with massive amounts of debt. Like in, in, say, the U.S., whatever, we hear this thing about the student debt. People go to college and come out of college with a massive debt or something. It's not unknown here in Japan for people to come out of a wedding ceremony with a pretty fair amount of, of debt, you mm. know. I don't know, I can't equate the two exactly, but it's a thing here, you know. It's a yeah. thing. There are families who really feel that the social norm, we are this status in society, so we must have a wedding that reflects that status in society. 
And I think she's nodding. There would be most people, I think, would feel this. And it can be sometimes a staggering financial burden just to show the right face. If we don't do this, people will think we can't afford it or we're broke or something. This is very much a thing here. And it's, it's okay for me to see her resisting that stuff. She doesn't care about the, that sort of social norm. We must show that we have this much money and stuff like that. So. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm I'm waiting to see how this plays out. That's so whatever. Disney. So, so Disney. <laughs> okay. At the moment, we're busy with the moving process. So. So so so. I will let you know. And yeah. Dave's told us I've never had a wedding. You know, I've been to them. I saw this year. I've been to them, but I've never had it. I've been to the city hall once. Me and my previous partner, we went to do the paperwork because I needed it for the visa. So I've, I'm married for getting a visa, which you're not supposed to do. And I've never had a wedding ceremony, never. I've never done the thing and, you know, <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing that. Yeah, <laughs> Hey, no, 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 it's fine. It doesn't matter. We saw, we saw enough tracing. It's fine. No problem at all. Ayana-san, thank you very much for thank saying you, hi. I'll you. see you upstairs soon. See you upstairs. It's Monday. It's not a chaos Monday. There wasn't all that many orders during the weekend, you know. So, and the shop also. It was busy but not chaotic, and we only had one order, I think, for shipping ah, okay. upstairs. So it's not going to be a, a chaotic day for you. I've got two or three things. I've got to touch base with you. I've, I've got a note. I forgot what they are. And I didn't, you know, and I didn't clean up all the stuff that you asked me to do. You know, she gives me a note Friday night, Dave, try and sort of get to this. <laughs> And I gotta say, I didn't because I was a good boy. I yeah, traced, I traced, I traced, I traced, I traced, I traced. So. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Talk, 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 talk. It's a fun question, how much I'm supposed to take? Because both of the people in this wedding are my employees now. When they got married, only one of them was my employee. Then we hired Taransan, and so now I've got to give wedding gifts to two people, but it's the same couple. I have no idea what to do, no idea. I will go to the guidebooks, what is a, a recommended amount for a person like me, for a company this size, for people of that age book. There are social guidebooks that will help me how much of a donation I should make. Okay, I think the show and tell I was going to open the other day is here, but it's behind me because one that looks like it's more fun came in last night. This is not socks material, socks blowing, but these are nice, interesting prints. If I haven't screwed up which package is which, these will be fun. So I'm saying books for such details. Absolutely, there are books here. Magazines that give you social guide. How much to take to a wedding. We're talking in a classical Japanese wedding case. How to tie the bow on the outside of the envelope. There are guidebooks for this. Now nobody's going to, those guys, Aino-san is not going to look at my envelope and say, he doesn't get this. He's tied the bow over instead of under. We, we get this. But there are people who do that. And in general, the richer or more famous you get. I, will, I would never be invited to such a wedding as that, but there are weddings like that. You go to the guidebooks and you get it right. Absolutely. Etiquette. Yeah, whatever. Every culture has its etiquette. Everybody. You think one couple per member to open. The couple themselves don't touch the cash. When you go to a wedding and you take the money with you, you're going to the wedding, there's an uketsuke, the, the front desk there, wherever this is, at a wedding hall, a party restaurant, there's an uketsuke. And f either re uh, employees of the wedding hall, or in this case of the one she's talking about there, friends of theirs, before the ceremony starts, a couple of their friends will sit at the uketsuke. And they've got already a list in front of them of who was invited. They know who's coming. And as you come to the table, they will ask you who you are. And I'll say, I'm David Bull. They will look down the list. Ah, David, yes, thank you for coming. They will check. And then she'll sit there. And at that point, I give her the envelope. And she then checks my name, passes it to somebody else. That person opens it as I am there, brrr, counts, checks, writes down the number, and in I go. So the couple themselves don't see the cash at that point. It's taken care of by attendants. Professional in the case of when you hire a wedding hall or your friends if it's a wedding like the one she described. It's all 
chapter and verse. It's been organized. It's been the way it is for many, many, many years. And it's the way people want to do it, to minimize social stress. Just follow the rules. It's the same in any culture. It's all pretty much set. Follow the rules and everybody will know their place. They'll know their position. They know what to do. It's not just Japan that does that. Come on. A Western wedding reception has its own pattern and its own flow, just the same. Okay, we have some fun prints here. And I think I know enough about these to be able to speak sensibly rather than, oh my God, what have we got? I can't tell, I can't read this. We know what's in here. It's a mixed bag. The guy put it up for auction last week and I was really rather surprised. I believe I got it for 3,000 yen, what you're about to see in the package here. I believe cost me 3,000 yen. Let me just confirm here. Yes, indeed, 3,000 yen for what you're about to see here. I'm going to put some of it aside just for, well, let's just start at the top. Okay, first things first, there are a few of the casual, small, little labels. Some of these were for personal use, some were for business use. We will see company names here, we will see private names here. They're just sort of a picturesque name card. They're not the name card in the sense of this is my business address, my email address. They're just simply who I am. And we have here, this is a business in front of Kaminariman. This is Asaksa. Oh my God, look at this. They're going to all, they're all going to be local. Yoshihara Shafuda. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Very nicely made, very nicely carved. They look like members of a Senshafida group. The people, you know, we're going to see in a minute, the main Senshafida we're going to see has group members' names on it, and these will be their little personal cards and names which they will pass out to each other. Very nicely made, very nicely carved. We are looking at pre-war material here. This is 1920s, 1930s, going by the, going by the uh, style and paper here. Moto area. So the address, the area where the person is, and it's either his actual name or it's his company name. These are nice. Let's put these aside. Let's go. It, ah, this is Pyom Pyom Do. This is one of the companies who used to make these Senshafda. And we have again, you see the size? These are f the same size. They're cut at the edge here. So this is supposed to represent one, two, three, four. This is a mini Senshafda. And it would have been put out, I think, in the year of the rabbit. And it's Okamoto-san, the guy's name, from Pyon Pyon Do. It's Pyon, and then this Ku syllable is a syllable that means repeat the previous group of characters. So it's Pyon Pyon Do, and it was the name of a company that made such things. They made pochibukuro, they made envelopes, they made small-scale woodblock prints. Okay, here's the main event. This is today's main thing, the thing that I was bidding on. This is Kabuki Ju Hachiban. And it was made in, we have a date, Taisho Junen. Taisho 10. Do we have Taisho 10? That's somewhere around, I don't remember, 19, 19, come on, somebody give me a hint here, 1910s. It's the early 1900s. I think it's not, it's just after the first war, I believe. And the Kabuki Ju Hachiban was a set of Kabuki plays. It was a collection of names of Kabuki plays which were taken as the personal fiefdom of the Danjudo clan. Of course, anybody could, any, any company could put on these planes, they, plays. They were part of, of uh, Japanese general culture. But this group of 18, which featured a lot of what's called the Aragoto style, rough stuff acting, were taken as the personal group of plays to be acted on by the Ichikawa Danjudo group. And we will see, there will be 18 of these, and we will see absolutely everywhere, we will see the mon, which is representing sake cups. Three square sake cups together is the mon for the Danjudo clan. So we have a set of prints here from 19, what is it, 19, 1921. And the calligraphy here, I am not going to, I can 
I can't read this. I'm, I'm cheating here. When I said this is Kabukiju Hachiban Taishu Junen, it's because I know that already. And actually, I can read it because I know what it says. If you ask me to just randomly dig into the middle here, this is going to be a real struggle for me. These are the names of the plays. No, I can try and hunt for the ones I know. Skeroku, I got it. Hey, I can read that. Look at me. I'm so good at this. That's Skeroku. I'm hunting around for the ones that I know so I can see what they look like. Another one, Yanone. Where's Yanone? I can't find it. No, this is very, very stylized script. I'm sorry. I'm not very good at reading this at all. Neither is any modern Japanese person. If I asked my staff members to read this, they would not be able to do it. So we have here 18 prints in the set, each one representing one of the plays. And as we've seen many times, the names carved on the outside here are the sponsors of the people in the group who sponsored these. And some of them will be real names of people, some will be handle names. Some I can read. This is Kitamura Akame, Kamehachi. Kameya or Kamehachi, that sounds like his real name. This is the one of the plays that has the, oh, good morning, Gurugawa-san, hello, hello. It has a, a, piece, a pin set, the one they use for, for I don't know, small, small uh, tweezers. And these are nicely done. Let's zoom in a bit closer. Look at these. There's your scale here. And these are the 18 plays in the Kabukiju Hachiba, together with their sponsors' names. Oh, look at this. Op Opera Khan. Not sure about the pronunciation of the name. Opera Khan, maybe that's the name of a, if it's something to do with opera, or was an opera theater. Iguchi san. Hey, look at this. Come across, you got, uh, no, Oda Udo, Udo, have a look at these. A lot of this is readable. This is the Kabukiju Hachiban. S -s -s, I don't know. Look at this, some of this is readable, show. We have Seiyo Ryori, a Western restaurant, mm -hmm. and I can't read the name. Nani Nani Do, Nani Nani Do, uh, something Ike Do. Fruit. No idea. Is that a cha? Cha something cha do? Tei. Tei, tei, oh, of course. Tei te shogun. Te, 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 te. Nishi, so. so. I think it's cha ji tei. So, name of the restaurant. So. Mm. Oh, fudo. They are. They're really, really fun. Mm. This is from Taisho, uh, Taisho Ten. Taisho Ten. Taisho Ten, 1921. And it represents the 18 plays that are in the Kabukiju Hachiba, the mm -hmm. group of plays that were, that were used by the Danjuro group. And these are the sponsors' names, the people who paid for these prints to be, to be created. I'm very, very happy to get these. They're, they're not dramatic art, they're not glorious uh, treasures, but it costs 3,000 yen for the batch of them, and they are going to be a very nice part of our collection. Again, this is the Danjiro clan mark, Ichikawa Danjiro. And it represents three sake cups nested mm. together. Masu, de shan. Masu. Is, what's called that? San Masu? Mitsu Masu? What's Mitsu the name? Masu. Mitsu Masu, kind of. Mm. So. Someone's asking, is it foxing or modeling on the backgrounds? No, it's gold. It's what's called sunago. In the background, you're seeing the shiny little gold specks. This is gold leaf, which is crumpled into tiny little fragments. They will print a base layer of glue on the paper and sprinkle the gold leaf on. So it's a little bit of bling. So before and, the print? No, after. after. Uh, oh, it's not in the area where the print is. So my guess is there's a mask. They print mm. the gold on. They print the glue on the background. Mask out with a piece of oh. paper the character and the border. Sprinkle a tiny bit of gold leaf on. Because we don't see the gold anywhere else on the print, and we don't see it on the characters. We've also got shomenzuri, the black area here. If I try and get the angle right, there it is, you can see it, down by my thumb here. If I put the paper right, the black shines. It's, grab one of these, you can see. If you hold it up to the light, you can see the black shines against the light. It's shomenzuri, front rubbing. Mm. Even the... Uh, it's called what? Shomenzuri? Shomenzuri, front rubbing. Front side rubbing. And by now I've got so many of these Kabukiju Hachiban prints that I should be able to remember 
the characters' names and what's happening in each of these stories, but I really don't. I'm sorry. Very, very, very nice. And I'm so happy to get these. They were just, they took so much care with this. The carving is so nice. The printing is so nice. Mm. And it was just cheap stuff. I couldn't believe nobody else bid on Sounds a hand for this whole box. Yeah. Wow. My God, I just, you know. The auctions I won last night are not like that. I, I spent a lot of money last night, more than I should have. But we'll get to that next week when we see those auctions. Last night I got scammed a little bit on Yahoo Auctions. Not quite scammed. It was, uh, it's what they call a sagi. It's a little bit of fraud. Well, we'll talk about it next week when the prints come. I had my budget for auctions. And last time, last night, there were two or three things I wanted, but I couldn't afford to get them all. So I had to do my prioritizing. So I chose, I would really like to get this object. So before, this one, I wasn't quite sure. So I bid on this one, and it turned out I got beat. I had bid three, four hundred dollars on something. Somebody beat me, so that's okay, lost that one. So I used my resources and bought the next one. So I won this one. Then I woke up in the morning, and it turned out the jury in the night, this one actually had been a scam. The people pushing up my price canceled their bids, which is, of course, they were friends of the, they were friends of the auction guy. They pushed the bid up just to where they found out where my top bid was, then canceled. So I got the email in the morning saying, actually, you won this after all. But I had blown my budget on the other item. So, so I got two choices I, this morning. I can write back to him and say, okay, I'm going to buy this. Or I can say, you freaking scammers, no way am I going to pay that price, blah, 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 blah. But Yahoo won't help. They don't. Uh, they don't. Okay. Too, many, too many stories over, overlapping here. Sorry. We'll talk about that next week, deciding on what I get. So, so. Someone says, that should be illegal. Of course it's illegal, but Yahoo doesn't help. Usually when that happens, I just simply, I write, say, sorry, no, this is, there was fake bidding, so I am backing out. I also, I'm going to cancel my bid. Then the email comes, you can't cancel bids. I'm like, wait a minute, two people above me already canceled their bids, you told me. And yeah, I can't, so, so, so. <laughs> Yahoo Auctions is all for the sellers. There's no consumer protection there whatsoever. I mean, maybe if you get a box of bricks or something, they will help you. But in the normal flow of bidding, they do not touch you. So I've got to make my decision. I really did want that thing, but I've blown my budget for the month. So do I bite the bullet and buy this thing? Because it's a, well, whatever, whatever. We'll talk about it next week. 18 prints. We've got to get these on the net. We've got to get these up. The reason I'm hustling through to the back, we're over time now, but it doesn't matter. Let's just keep going because there's some other fun stuff. The auction was nominally for the 18 prints, but there was other stuff inside that the guy basically didn't even mention. And have a look at this. There's some more random little senshafada. No big deal. This is all omake. This is all just senshafada from people who were part of those groups. But inside here, Let's keep going. Where are they? Somewhere in the bottom here. Another flower one. This was all just extra freebies. Here we go. Here we go. There's three at the bottom here. These are fun. These would have been fun by themselves. They are indeed woodblock. I thought they might not have been woodblock. Okay, have a look at this. We have... This should have been a show and tell all by itself. It's already 9.34. Are we okay? Should I save this for next time? Shimban Yamato Nishikie. And these are shrunk down reproductions of what would have been prepared as a larger Nishiki print. And this particular one is showing guys who go out on the streets of Edo selling stuff with the intention of having kids. Udagawa-san, you've got to see this one because you're going to help me with this one. This is the one, it's the activities for kids, or people selling stuff for oh, kids. Oh, this is the one that I saw yesterday. We, so we looked at it on the net yesterday, Tamaya. But he's blowing bubbles, but like, is he selling it? Do people pay him money for this, or a guy that walks around town just blowing bubbles? Is it you give him a coin and he then blows a bunch of bubbles? Maybe that's... People could get paid for this? What's your job? I, I walk around town blowing bubbles. I guess so. There it is. Because the other people are clearly, this is a business. This is uh, an ame. This is what kind of, oh, I've got to get this on camera, sorry. 
This is an Ameya. I can't read the first character, but something Ameya. And this guy is selling some kind of sweets that are made in the shape of little animals. It's kind of a sugar confection, I guess. And you buy the thing on a stick. They still do this up at the Sky Tree over there. The guy yeah, makes it. it. He's got a piece of they, so, so sugary stuff. Beko, I mean. Beko, I mean, mm, so they, they'd still do this over at the Sky Tree. There's a little shop there. The guy's got a sugary mixture. He dips a stick in, and while you watch, mm. he makes a rabbit, sells it to you, and you eat the rabbit. And that trust, seems to be exactly what's going here. So, so, so. Mm. This guy is selling toys. He's selling tops. And he's selling that little thing that goes flap, 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 turn upside down, flap, 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 flap. I don't know what it's called. I had one when I was a kid, actually. This lady is obviously selling a hosgi. She's selling, this would be seasonal. This would be only in the autumn. She's selling the hosgi, those hosgi, I don't know how to pronounce it. But it's a it's a kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Hosgi. This guy's toys, whatever, it's drums and some yeah, toys. And, like and this guy's selling some kind, of, uh, some kind of food as well. So it's sellers, people that are selling stuff on the streets of Ame, on the streets of Tokyo, as a woodblock print. And I would have happily paid a bunch of money on auction for this. And this stuff is tossed in as a freebie to our Kabuki Ju Hachiba. Another one in the same group is the Firefighters Emblems of Tokyo which we got two copies, and then look at this. We have Skiroku and Yayoi. And the idea, I guess, what would the kids do? They would cut out the bottom parts and stick them on the top. Kind of a make your own dolls. And these are woodblock prints, and these actually look a whole bunch older. The Kabuki ones we had we're from Taisho 10. These are absolutely older than this. These would go back to late Meiji. So there we have it. A good, fun envelope full of stuff. And we're going to try and get this in the schedule for getting photographs made and getting it on the website. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, thank you for watching. A bit scrappy, and there's stuff, we just, just whatever. We just zipped past it, didn't even look at it. Oh my God, can't be helped. Okay, thank you very much. I'm over time now. These girls are waiting. They've got to get the shop cleaned up. They want to start making noise, vacuum cleaners, wiping the floor, get the shop open for 10 o'clock, which happens in 22 minutes. Okay, thanks, gang. This is Monday. I'll see you Thursday, same time, same station, for some... It could be tracing, or it could be... I'm getting near the end. If I finish that face, finish that calligraphy, finish those kimono patterns, we could be carving by Thursday. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We'll see you soon. Thursday, maybe the last tracing. Saturday, maybe we start carving. I don't know. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you very much, gang. See you in a few days. Let's get busy. It looks dark all of a sudden, but it's a very bright, sunny day today. You're just seeing shadows. See you soon. Bye for now.